All right, welcome back. Uh, today we're trying to finish up uh, this phase of Zool, uh, which is, I guess, phase three. And we're adding uh, the final bit, which is uh, lives and health bars. So that's uh, our goal today. I think after we add those, uh, we're done with this phase. And we actually have a playable game at this point. Um, we have a score. Uh, I guess we have a, a, a goal, uh, which is collecting candies and stuff uh, and getting score, you know, getting a score, a high score perhaps. So um, we're going to add the last part, uh, just uh, keeping track of lives and also keeping track of health. Uh, and we're going to make kind of a rudimentary health bar as well. So uh, let's add that to the game. Now to, to add this, to have lives and health, so you also have to, well, it's unfortunate, but Zul has to die. Yes. Uh, Zul has got to meet an end at some point. Um, and then the room restarts. <coughs> Uh, perhaps it's room based or perhaps it's you know the whole game based I don't know you can decide since uh, you'll be adding additional levels perhaps in the future so uh, we need to to add an object then for the dead Zool uh, unfortunately <laughs> poor Zool Zool has to die uh, let's add him here so we're creating an object uh, We'll call him Object Zool Dead. Uh, what sprite do we use? Uh, kind of an interesting sprite. He kind of fades away. Let's see if he's there. Zool. There's this one. Yeah, die left and right. We're going to set the default to left, I think. Just assume he's going to the left. But he kind of just freezes and then fades away. Um, and uh, then the question is, uh, what layer does uh, this go on? This will be on the instances layer, uh, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, so um, I better make sure he recreated it. But um, I'm wondering if there's a, a layer kind of buried in one of these settings here. And I don't know. We'll see if this works. Uh, Right now, our, our layer is set to score, but we want to say instances. See, that's kind of a bad sign. <laughs> uh, when we changed the layers, it kind of disappeared. So, so we'll see what layer he ends up on, and then we'll fix it later if it doesn't work. Uh, we certainly have to be careful here about the parent. We still want Zool to be the parent object Zool, so we'll add that uh, to there, uh, parent. We choose Object Zool, and he inherits all the things that Object Zool has defined for him, all this stuff. Um, now, we don't know what state Zool's going to be in when he dies. He's going to be falling or or walking or climbing. And so we have to shut off all the physics. Uh, the first thing we have to do is shut off the gravity. Uh, and this would be in the create event of, uh, of this. So we're going to add a create event. Uh, we have to be careful too, uh, since it already has a create event. Zool already has a create event, so Object Zool Dead is going to override that create event. So I'm assuming. Yeah, so anytime you override a, a, an event of a parent, uh, parent object, you have to be careful because you got to figure out whether you need those variables that are recreated in that create event uh, or not. Uh, we're assuming not here. So um, we're going to uh, set the state, first of all, in the create event uh, to objects will dead. So let's do that. Uh, set variable here. <clears throat> so remember, we have that state variable. Uh, let me. All right, so what I've done is I've gone in here, we're in the uh, create event, and I've added, uh, changing the state variable to say e state dead. Hopefully that uh, constant exists. And then we want to set the gravity force, that's this one, to zero, and then the direction also to zero, just to be safe. So we've got those three uh, set up in the create event for objects will dead. Uh, 
just to make sure, double check that he's not moving. Uh, we're also set the speed. So let's see if we can do that. Here's speed. That's the animation speed. We want movement speed here. We'll also set that to zero. Direction really doesn't matter. Uh, but it's going to just, we just want to make sure Zool is not moving. Uh, when he dies, he's just going to freeze in place. Uh, and then we need to play the, the dead sound. So let's see if we have that sound. Yeah, object, that's enemy die. Hmm, I don't see it. I have to go find it. All right, so it looks like we have to create it. Uh, so we'll go into sounds and we'll say, create sound. And the sound we're going to create is uh, is the dying sound. SND underscore die. This is the Zool dying. It's kind of hard to find the button where you go and get the file from, but it's right there. Choose sound file. It's not very visible. And we want to, we want the uh, dying sound. And let's see what that sounds like. Hmm. Okay. Interesting sound. Hopefully that'll come through on the video. Um, so now we have the sound and we want to play it. So when do we play it? I guess at the end of the create event, right? For objects will die or dead. So here's the end. Uh, let's find the drag and drop for sound. And here's a uh, play sound here. We'll choose our dying sound. We don't want it to loop and there's no target, so I think that's fine. Now we have to add another event. The other event we need to add is um, end of the animation, right? So we'll say animation end. So create event, animation end, that's under other. There it is. And uh, what we want to do here, the way the Zool uh, handles lives, or the game is supposed to handle lives, is Zool gets three lives, but he gets three health bars per life. So uh, you kind of have nine lives, I guess, uh, all together. But uh, if you add up the health bars, each time he get hurt, he gets hurt, he loses a health bar. He loses three health bar bars, he loses a life. So I guess it comes out to nine. Um, so we want to check lives first. So let's check that variable. Let's see if they have one here. Test lives or something. Let's scoot this over so we can see it. All right, so they do have an if lives thing, so we might as well use it. So if lives equals zero, what do we want it to do? Well, um, I guess uh, we want to set lives back to three. So it's here. We'll set it back to three, and it's not relative. Uh, what else has to occur? Well, you have to restart the room. So they lose three lives. Uh, they fade out, and and then the, the room has to or then, then the room restarts. So they don't go all the way back to the beginning of the game. You can decide that later, what you want to do, but we want to just restart the room. So we'll see if there's a drag and drop for that. Here, restart room, so we'll do that. Room restarts. Um, so what do we do instead? So let's drag out an else, I guess. So let's say lives is not zero. What do we do? Um, well, I guess uh, we need to take one away from life, I guess. So let's do that again. Lives. Here, we'll take one away. We'll put this on the edge. So we'll say negative one. We'll just add negative one to lives and that'll take one away. And then, And then here too, we uh, restart the room. This is where I'm a little bit puzzled. The first one probably should restart the game, but since we only have one room, it restarts the room. The second one should restart the room, 
right? You still have one live left or two lives left. Uh, you don't want to, do you want to uh, restart the whole room? It'd be nice if you could just pick up the room where it left off. But the problem with that is where do you put Zool then? Uh, and if you have multiple levels, Zool could start at any place in a level. And so you can't really hard code a level location where Zool spawns or something um, without some si significant coding. So for now, the, the, re the result is going to be the same. The room restarts. I suppose if you lost all your lives, it would be better if the game restarted. But uh, like I said, we only have one room. So this time that's, that's going to be what we have to do. Um, so now we open up object Zool. Well, let's see. We set the variable, and then we have to restart the room still. So let me just do that. I'll just copy this. Perhaps there's a way to duplicate it. My mouse is really not cooperating today. I'm going to copy this. Copy. And then I paste it. See where it puts it. Right where I don't want it. So I'm going to drag that and put it here instead. Room restarts either way. Now we go to Object Zool. So here's Object Zool. And then uh, what we want to do is on the room start we want to set the value of health to three so you get three health per room I guess so let's see if we can find that room start event um, other room start there it is and here uh, we're setting health to three so health is not a hundred, it's just three. So we'll hard code it to three. So you start out with three health bars, I guess. Um, and it's three health bars for each life. And then also in here we have a, we have to create an, another other event and this is game start. So when the game starts, Object Zool uh, needs to have three lives. So we're going to set lives then now to three. So not health, but actual lives. We'll set that to three at the game start. So now live, or Zool has three lives at the beginning of the game. And then uh, we need to create a new object uh, that's going to be called Object Health. And I suppose that's going to be in... Yeah, let's see where they want it. It's in the icons group. So, right here, we're going to create another object. And we'll call this one Object Health. My guess is this is one of the uh, health bars. We'll find out in a second. Let's see if we have a sprite for that under icons. Yeah, there it is. It's just like a. Zool's eyes or something, or a mask or something. So that's going to be our health bar indicator. And here too, I'm a little bit puzzled about where, uh, what layer this is going to end up on. Clearly we want this on the scores layer. So, hmm. I guess we can, we can add a uh, create event and just make sure it's on the scores layer. So here, we'll do uh, execute code. Or I guess we don't have to do that. We just do a set variable uh, layer. Well, yeah, I, this might work. So we say layer, and then we say, um, what do we say uh, for layers? Uh, I'll have to look. Uh, so I'm looking at, I guess the controller, we create these objects and the layer is called score. Yeah, but we're not calling create instance now. So I guess we have to look it up. So going back uh, to object Zool. Oh, 
we're trying to create um well, are we creating them right now i guess i guess we have object health right here and we want to set the layer to um the uh the score layer so maybe it's called set layer for <laughs> for lucky uh, layer now maybe layer set layer so let's layer stuff add instance layer get get all now Boy, lots of layer stuff okay so I have to figure this out hang on just a moment All right, so it looks like the one we need is layer get ID. So let's look at that real quick. Yeah, you provide the layer name. So that's what we need. So going back to our workspace. It's interesting that you can embed XML right here in the in the drag and drop stuff. And here in quotes, we say score. Make sure you spell it exactly the same way. Capitalization especially. Closing parenthesis. And that should set the layer to the scores layer, because that's where we're putting our scores and stuff. All right, so we have the layer set up. Now, um, in the step event for Object Zool, so we're back to Object Zool here. Well, actually, this will be inside object health. Interesting. So we add a step of it here. Here's step, step. And what we do is we, we test to see if uh, health, uh, health is equal to zero. So let's see if there's a conditional for health. Um, yeah, there's one. So if health equals zero, what's supposed to happen? Uh, we need to test another variable. So let's say test, uh, if maybe, yeah, if variable, so that's inside, I guess. It's nested inside. And we're trying to see if uh, Zool state is not equal to Z state dead. Um, so here we say state. Here we say not equal. And here we say Z state uh oh we have a problem see how that macro is missing there is no z state dead so we have to find where those get defined and add add one to it so this is going to crash right here all right let me go find that all right so we have a script here that uh, defines all the the macros. Uh, uh, we skipped a, a couple things that so we're going to go back later perhaps and fill in. So this this number is going to be a little bit strange. Uh, but C state uh, dead is actually going to have a, a value of 10. So I'm going to change this to dead and then set the value to 10. There's some other states that we haven't implemented yet so we're going to hold off on those. So that's good. Now we go back to health. And we said state. Now, certainly the health object doesn't have a state. We got to figure out if Zool, uh, yeah, this is a, yeah, we have to be more specific here. We have to ask about object Zool, whether object Zool state is uh, z state dead because certainly the health thing doesn't have a uh, have a state associated with it 
So there's that. Okay, so, and we got to make sure to say not. So if health is equal to zero and Zul is not dead, then it would seem to me that Zul needs to die. And so that's what we do. We, uh, we do a change instance. And that would be, hmm, instance, instance change. Here, change instance. Uh, what are we changing to? Well, I guess the dead state. So that would be Zul dying. Okay. And then it will go through the create event and do all the things that Zul needs to do when he dies. And then uh, we have to add a draw event. Uh, and this is to the health object. So let's add that too. So when this gets drawn, so here's draw, draw. What is supposed to happen? Well, again, we have to do, <coughs> uh, we have to put this on the score layer. So I'm gonna switch this over to uh, GML. So now we have a GML kind of workspace. And then again, I'm going to look at this uh, collect count thing and look at its draw event. And then we're going to copy that, and put it in for the health. Because <clears throat> we're drawing on the same surface. So we go and get the camera again. Uh, we're trying to figure out the dimension of the camera's view. So we get the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. All right, and so we have Y, uh, we get X, and then, then we start a repeat right away. So I guess we can whack all of this stuff. So deleting that. And we can also, we're not doing digits, so we can get rid of that. So we're simplifying certainly a lot. How many times do we repeat this? Um, well, I guess it's all dependent on health. How many of these do we draw? So we'll say health. So health is our number. And then what do we do? Uh, well, we need to draw it, I guess. So we don't have to do that. Here, now we're drawing our health uh, sprite. Is that an icon or? Let's check our sprites and see what it's called. It's not Heath, certainly. Let's see, health. Nope, still doesn't work. Um, hazards. Icons, icon health, yeah, there it is. Changes color, which is good. Um, and what are we drawing? Uh, this is, hmm, I wonder what that second parameter is for draw sprite. Uh, it says, not really helping us here. Hmm. I guess I can't see it. It's the problem. It might say it at the bottom here when we yeah, there it is. Sub image X and Y. Well, there is no sub image, so we can say negative one here. It's usually the default. When there's no sprite. Uh for where do we put it on the screen? Uh well uh, it's going to be this. It's going to be 224 uh, times or plus 32 and then something called a unit. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, we're going to have to create that variable. For, for now, we're going to say unit. Yeah, we haven't created that variable yet. And then for, for y, we're going to just hard code that to 20. It's all relative to the camera position. So let's create that variable up here, I guess. We'll say var, because we want this to be local, call unit, and we'll set that equal to zero to start with. And then here, we'll say unit equals unit plus one. So we're just adding one to unit. And then I'll just increment through the health bars, I guess. And you're just scooting it over a little bit each time when you draw it. Um, so that's it for the draw event. What else do we need? Uh, I guess we need to draw lives as well. So I'm going to just copy all this just in case we need it. And then we'll, we're going to create the uh, lives object. So let's do that next. Uh, where's lives? We see that uh, lives doesn't exist yet here. So we'll include that here. Uh, let's see. Create object. Object lives. What sprite do we use? Um, these icons, I guess. Here's the life icon. It's more of his head, I guess. And uh, here we want to draw this uh, on the scores layer as well. So we'll add that, that little bit of code in the create event that switches layers just to make sure. So execute code. And we'll set the layer equal to uh, layer underscore get ID. And then we pass in the scores layer. All right. Semicolon. So that'll put it on the scores layer. Um, uh, then we add a uh, draw event. So what happens when this gets drawn? So here's the draw event. And again, uh, I'm going to switch this to GML mode. And then copy in the code I copied earlier. Still got to get the X and Y of the camera. Our unit, I guess, is going to be that. Um, hmm. This is kind of hard coded. So you would say here instead of all this, you would say 490. And then for uh, Y, you would say 280. This is on the bottom of the screen, I suppose. And then. Certainly we don't need unit anymore, so we can get rid of that. Where are we repeating? No. We're just drawing so we can get rid of the get rid of the loop. It means we can get rid of that. And then we take these two and outdent it. Um we're not doing that. Okay, so we're not drawing one for each life. What we're doing is just drawing the he head that's going to represent life, and then we're going to draw a number next to it. Well, maybe, are we? We're going to draw the appropriate digit for... Yeah. <clears throat> so we draw the icon, and now we draw the digit. Um... Now, we don't expect this to be more than one digit wide, so we can uh, he 
here we're trying to draw lives, so sprite. I guess sprite icon lives. Is that on our list? Yeah. And then here, what we're drawing is a number. So this would be icon. Is it digits? Digits is in where? Where are our digits? I forget. I guess they're here. Sprite icon digits, yeah. And here, I guess we need lives. Okay, so that's going to be our index, how many lives we have. And then our positioning is 460 for X. And for Y, um, 280. Hmm. Now, we're relying our, on our controller to create a lot of things. Uh, so far, it's created the collect count thing, and it's also created the score. But now we have to also create uh, the object health and object lives. So we'll go to the controller. Controller. And it's create event. See, I was so careful to put the put it on the scores tab. Uh, we're just doing it again this way. So again, I just, I'm going to just copy this. Be careful when you copy and paste because, you know, pasting errors are a common thing. So instead of object score, we're doing object health. We're adding that. And then also I'm going to duplicate this one. Copy, paste it. Instead of health, then uh, we're making lives. That's this one. And they all go on the scores tab. The X and Y uh, location doesn't matter because it's going to be repositioned anyway when it gets drawn. Hmm. Okay, so I think that's it on the changes for lives and health. Uh, one thing we're not doing yet is taking one away from health uh, when... Zool gets hurt, so we're going to have to add that somewhere. I'm not sure where. Okay, so game crashes. Um, get this error. Object Zool dead. Instance change. I think we forgot a parameter on that one. So uh, we see it's in the create event of Object Zool dead. So let's go there. Here's Object Zool dead. Create event. And uh, what did it tell us? I forget now. We're inside the create event that's here. We set that up, so that shouldn't be a problem. Let's try it one more time and see what error we get. Sorry, I didn't look that closely. So reading the error message, it says estate dead is not set before reading it. Hmm. So here's state. State belongs to object Zool. We made this object Zool. We have e state dead, and I think we added it to the defined constants. Now it's z state. It's not e state. Hmm. So there's our problem. So z state. So it caught that. That's good. Try again. See if it compiles this time. Ooh. <laughs> Played the noise. I wonder why. Ah. Looks like... Yeah, right there. We heard the noise because it saw, thought that Zul died right away. And it's because... Why? Um... Well, let's say we're an object tool in the draw event, right? So here in the draw event, for object tool, we haven't put one in for uh, Z state uh, dead yet. So we still need to do that. 
So we add another one here, I guess. Didn't really go over that in my reference. So let's see. Z state uh, dead, right? So what do we draw? Um, it's interesting that he would he would die right away. Object Sul, this is the right side, so Object Sul, hmm. Object Sul dead right. Let's see if that's defined. It's, didn't change color. Hmm. Hopefully we have that sprite. Object Sul die right. Okay, so I misspelled it. That's better. It's not an animation, so we set that to negative one. And then just it's X and Y, whatever, wherever uh, Zool is located. And then we'll add this to the left side. So go down here to the left side, here. And add it there, oops. And here's left. But then the question is, why are we dying right away? That's interesting. Because we heard the dying sound, right? Yeah, we hear that right away. Here's another error. It's still in here. So, oh, it's up at the top. Yeah, we, we die up at the top. It thinks we're dead right away. So here, hmm, in this code, Trying to get so we can see it. So if hurt and global dot step step count is, yeah. So we exit right away. It's complaining about hurt. It doesn't know what hurt is. So what that tells me is the hurt variable is is on it gets created in object Zool. And remember back when, uh, if we're in the create event, you see uh, hurt hopefully being created. Yeah, there hurts being set. But when objects will die, I didn't call the uh, parent event. I was a little bit worried about that, that we didn't do that there. Now it's coming to bite us. So here on the drag and drop, uh, say, if we type in the word parent, see call parent. We want to do that first, I think. Let's see how far problem goes away. We still have a problem though, because I'm not sure why he's dying right at the beginning. Yeah. He turns instantly into the dead state. See how he's frozen there? And he ends up way up there too, which is in the wrong spot. So I'm going to do some sleuthing. I'll be back. Okay, so looking back at our code here, it looks like we, I put in a mistake here. This is in the step event of object Zool health. Uh, if health is equal to zero, then we check to see if he's not dead. Then if he's not dead, we, we, we turn into dead. But the problem is we didn't put this over on the right. So this is, this will happen every time health is equal to zero. It would automatically do that. This has to be attached over here. Okay, let's see if that fixes it. So the error is still occurring, but we fixed something. I mean, that's, that was certainly a problem. But uh, So now I'm looking at the game start, uh, where we actually set the lives to three. Uh, we didn't set the health, though. And so since health is zero, then I guess... Uh, Still dies anyway, so uh, I think we also have to set health as well. So let's do that. Here's set health, and we're going to set that to three. Remember, we get three bars. Try it one more time. All right, so I've converted this, or just taking a look at uh, the preview for this one, which is the health objects uh, step event. And notice that it too is using this, this weird health variable. And we'd rather use the other health variable 
Um, so, so using these prepackaged ones, uh, it looks like there's a separate drag and drop health variable as well, and we're going to try to avoid using that. So, hmm, what should we do? Uh, we could do instead of checking that the drag and drop health variable, we just do uh, a standard if statement with a variable, and we'll use the uh, GML version. So that'll be hmm, here. Uh, now this is all messed up, but uh, maybe we'll put it up on top. So there. And we're going to use the the one that comes with, uh, yeah, see health is, there's two variables. There's a built-in variable and then this weird one. Not sure where that's coming from. So uh, we're going to attach this up here then and get rid of this one. So deleting that. And hopefully we won't die instantly. Uh, let's try it and find out. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, it didn't crash. But look at all these. Yikes. There's quite a few. <laughs> Looks like health was set to 100 somewhere. So when we reset it, uh, basically, where was that? That was in the controller. Yeah. There's object health. So maybe the create event of object health. Uh, create event. Now we're just doing the layer. So where's health get set again? Hmm. So it'd be here, uh, Object Zool's uh, game start event. Probably in room start as well. Yeah. So we're not going to use these predefined ones. Um, see how lives is set there too? I'm worried about that one as well. Let's just worry about health right now. So I'm going to delete that. And uh, instead, just do a set variable. And we'll use the, the normal health variable. And we'll set that to 3. Try it one more time. Yeah, now health isn't set to 100. <laughs> OK. But our lives are missing. We I don't see lives anywhere. See that? It's kind of missing. So that's a puzzle. Still need to solve. And room start, same thing. We're going to set health. Uh, instead of doing it like that, I'm going to just set, set it directly as a variable. So set variable health. Here's health, and we'll set it to three. All right, so here's a, a problem. Object lives wasn't showing up, so it's because uh, we had it on the wrong layer. I'm just gonna uh, wipe out this whole event because it's not needed. Uh, because when we create the object and uh, the controller creates it, it creates it on the, on the correct la layer. So now we should see it. Here, it shouldn't crash. And we see down here in the bottom corner. See, we've got a place where we can actually see it. There, you can see it there. But it tells us we have zero lives. So still, still an issue. All right, so here at game start um, in object Zool, uh, lives is set to zero. We need that to be set to three. And then I think we'll have lives. Uh, we'll try it one more time. Yeah, so there's our three. Uh, looks like we have lives now. So our last problem is to, how do we lose our life? Uh, see, we didn't lose one of our health bars. And so we have to go back to the collision event with uh, hazard or maybe object enemy to see, uh, uh, see how we lose a, one of the health bars. So we'll do that next. Right, so our collision event uh, between Zool and Object Enemy 
I suppose uh, we can subtract one from lives here. So we say lives equals lives minus one. Well, it's not lives, it's health actually. So you say health equals health minus one. So we're not gonna be that harsh. <laughs> uh, if they lose three health, then they lose a life, right? And then we'll take that same line of code and we'll apply it to when a uh, collides with a hazard. It's another time when he gets hurt. So we'll take one away from health. Let's try that, Let's see if that works. All right, so here's Zul, uh, happy little guy. Uh, let's see if he loses health when he collides with a monster or gets hurt. Okay, so he did lose his health there. Uh, lost health again. And then I'll just walk up to him and we'll see what happens when he dies. Oh, okay, so that's weird. We ended up here in the top left corner. Hmm. Looks like there's two Zools now, too. Maybe we forgot to get rid of the other one? Yeah, see that? We got a second Zool, so very strange, very strange. All right, I'm back. Um, I've been doing a lot of debugging, uh, trying to figure out uh, what's going on with Zool and why we keep getting two of them. And the main problem is, um, in, uh, is is the item that's monitoring uh, how much health you have uh, and whether or not Zool needs to change. That really should be up to Zool, not so much this health object. That causes no end of problems. There's issues here where are you talking about Zool or you're talking about yourself? And so I'm going to restructure this a little bit uh, just to make it uh, more straightforward. First of all, uh, we're going to go to the health object and we're just going to uh, get rid of the step event. Uh, we're going to actually monitor that in object Zool. So I'm going to delete that event. So that's step one. Another thing we haven't done yet uh, here in the sprites, um, the Zool sprites, is uh, these haven't been set up correctly yet. Uh, right now this says top left. Uh, again, Zools are supposed to be a middle center. So let's fix those while we're here. Here's Zool die left, and then all, that should also be middle center. Uh, also double check your collision mask to make sure that these are the numbers you see in both of those coll collision masks. Uh, those should match all the others. And then um, another big issue was um, here in Object Zool dead uh, in the create event. I thought, you know, we weren't getting the hurt variable and so I thought maybe that's because we weren't calling the parent event. Uh, but that's, this causes uh, lots of other problems. Uh, so we're going to actually get rid of that too. So I'm deleting that. And that uh, fixes, the I think, the double Zool problem. Uh, that's why we're getting two Zool, Zools. Um, and then... Uh, main problem here is uh, the lives uh, variable um, in the animation end event. So here, animation end, here's lives. Um, again, if you, if you look at this uh, like in, in preview mode, you can see that it's using the wrong live variable again. It's using the drag and drop variable for lives instead of the... the the GML version. Uh, so we need to change this conditional and these set lives as well. So let's do that. I'm going to drag this in here. And then we're just going to manually change the lives variable. And we're trying to see if lives is equal to that. I'm going to get rid of this one. Actually, I'm going to have to move all of these one by one, which is very frustrating here. And you may not have this destroy instance uh, there. It shouldn't be there, so I'm going to take that out as well. And then I'm going to get rid of that. And so that way, instead of using if lives, we're using if variable and just typing the lives variable in. Here's a set lives. That doesn't work because that's also using the wrong variable. Um, so instead of that, we just do a set variable instead. 
and we're going to assign it directly to lives and we're going to set that equal to three um, also here in animation end uh, we can, we're going to change this to um, less than or equal to one actually should be the correct uh, settings um, and we'll see why in a moment. And then um, we want to get rid of that one and move this up here first before we start the room. I'd like to get this after. Oops. There. Okay. So that's the first part. As you do that, I'm going to get rid of this code. So that's just confusing. Okay. So that's the top part. This is again in the animation end event of uh, objects a little dead. And then we also have to do this one as well. This is where we're actually subtracting one from life or from lives. So we're again we're replacing that with the call to this. And again, we're going to manually do this. We say lives. We'll say negative one, just like the other one. A relative and now we can get rid of this one if you have a destroy instance there which you probably don't uh, get rid of that um, and then it looks like that's correct all right so if you make all those changes uh, let's find out what happens Actually, before we do that, there's one last change we need to make, and that's here in the step event of object Zool. Since we got rid of the health object from keeping track of whether Zool need to be dead or not, it's better for Zool to track that. And so here, um, we can ask uh, in every frame whether uh, health uh, is say less than or equal to zero. I usually use less than or equal to just in case we miss it as it goes past zero. Um, we'll catch it the next time around. Um, so the health, if the health ever drops less than or equal to zero, then what should happen? Well, we should change into, uh, you know, do an instance change. Um, let's look at that. That's this one. And what do we change into object Zool dead? So we go to our Zools, say object Zool dead. So that'll happen every frame. It'll check to see if we don't have any more health. If we don't, then it goes into object Zool dead. Object Zool deads create, uh, gets called. That stops object, object Zool from moving. So here, I'm just setting the gravity to zero and the state to dead and the gravity direction to zero and the direction actually to zero. So everything's zeroed out. And then here in animation end, once it gets done animating, you check lives. Uh, if you have some lives, uh, then you just subtract one from lives. But if you don't, then you reset it uh, to three. Um, so let's try it. All right, so here's Zool um, come up here to the beastie. Uh, we lose health. You see one of the health bars disappeared. Lives is still at three, though. And I disappear, and now I have two lives left. Okay, I'm going to keep going and see if I can use up all my lives. Oops. I was hoping not to do that. Yeah, of course, that's what happens. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I have nothing left to, to hurt me anymore. So let me just restart. Okay, so I'll try this again. Okay, so I disappear, I lose a life. No. Now lives is down to to one. I 
So now lives went down to zero, and then it saw that, and then it restarted uh, with three lives again. Um, I'm a little puzzled here. Yeah, but it looks it looks like. All right, so uh, that's it. It looks like uh, we've got lives working finally. Uh, challenge. Sorry for the length of this video, uh, but there was a lot of issues. Uh, basically, we ran into a lot of problems where uh, game makers changed the way they do lives. It looks like they have two different lives variables for the drag and drop stuff and the game make or the game maker language stuff, and so that made it even more confusing. But we got past all those issues, and it looks like lives and health are working now for Zool. And so that puts us at the end of uh, phase three. Phase three is done. Uh, Zool can now kill monsters, get points. Uh, you can see the scores. Um, uh, you have uh, control of lives and then also control of health. Uh, all of those are working now. And we can call uh, phase three complete. So thanks for sticking through all these videos. So we're up to video 30. can believe how many videos it takes to build this game. Uh, are we done yet? No, there's more. Uh, uh, there's new attacks for Zul, and then we haven't done the B. Um, we haven't done the B monster yet, um, and then we have lifts with our elevators and things like that. But um, for now, this is enough to actually have a game. So we might call it quits here, or if I feel inclined, we'll continue on and uh, finish up the rest of the features of the game. All right, thanks.